We are less than a month away from the Super Mario Bros. movie releasing, and a considerable chunk of stuff and ideas I'll be unleashing in a bit has been stated and said before in a previous theory slash predictions video before the second trailer for the movie dropped. It was talking about Mario's potential personality and character arc, potential arcs in general, those and specific plot beats for Mario games being replicated in the movie and such, and at least Mario's arc We'll have plenty of stuff repeated here, but after plenty of more information and details about the movie being out now, I want to go deeper. I feel like before this movie comes out, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I feel like I'll have a solid grasp on what they plan to do with Mario's character and what his character arc will be in the movie. Even if I'm wrong and it winds up being a different arc or some details are different, as long as it's enjoyable slash good, I'm not going to complain. Not only his character arc, I feel pretty strongly that some of Mario's obstacles and character traits will also tie directly to Luigi as well, so I'm going to analyze and predict for him as well, not just Mario. And theorizing both the Mario Brothers and their potential arcs and characters for the movie will also give me an opportunity to predict more of the beginning to first third of the movie or so in more elaborate detail than I did three months ago. So allow me to analyze and predict Mario and Luigi's character arcs and stuff surrounding that. For the Mario movie. As we all know, Mario and Luigi are tightly knit brothers. No matter what weird theories or odd headcanons some people and creators have made over the years, they are brothers that love and look out for each other with plenty of games showcasing this. The entire Mario and Luigi series, the entire Luigi's Mansion series, Super Mario Galaxy, 3D Land, Mario Plus Rabbids, Mario Party, Mario Baseball, etc. It's common sense to know how much love the brothers have for one another, and I believe this movie will emphasize the bros' bond in a couple different ways. For one, this movie will likely open up with us seeing Mario and Luigi grow up and or work with each other. We'll get an introduction to Mario and Luigi and see how much they get along, maybe annoy or joke with each other, and what their chemistry's like. We've already seen the plumbing commercial parody, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, and given this is promoting their plumbing business in Brooklyn, it's pretty easy to guess this is before Mario and Luigi head to the Mushroom Kingdom do their plumbing job, reenact the Mario Brothers arcade game where they bump under shell creepers and sidesteppers as a part of them cleaning sewers and pipes, and maybe even seeing potentially their parents during or before this given it's an origin story. Yoshi's and Yoshi's Island are confirmed for the movie. There's potential for Kamek to recognize Luigi and Mario as the same babies he dealt with during the events of Yoshi's Island as well. We might get ties there, we might see Mario and Luigi's parents, and the whole babies come from Stork's thing from Yoshi's Island, etc. But centering back to Mario and Luigi and their time before the Mushroom Kingdom, there is also Wrecking Crew to consider. Spike is one of the tentpole characters for the film. He's Mario's boss for Wrecking Crew, and the most applicable description I can envision Mario and Luigi's experience with Wrecking Crew and Spike specifically is Benson's relationship to Mordecai and Rigby from Regular Show. Picture Benson from that show. He's the boss of the main characters of Regular Show. Responsible, headstrong, quick to anger, temper issues, low tolerance for incompetence and slackers, and is so ingrained and founded in his work, in his job. If you guys have seen Regular Show and Benson, or even just one of his temper tantrums, you can easily see why I'd make this comparison. Overalls and funny hats on Twitter make plenty banger, amazing Spike Mario and Luigi fan art. I highly recommend you check them out for more than just this, but one of their works I think visualizes what I mean in describing how Mario and Luigi's time at Wrecking Crew may go, but also Spike's character and potential cues to Mario and Luigi's personality. I believe Spike's personality and general demeanor will be similar to Benson, and Mario and Luigi's time at Wrecking Crew will serve as our first, if not one of our first, major displays of both their characters. To compare to Mordecai and Rigby, the former has a decently stronger sense of responsibility and awareness to more work-related situations than the latter, but both tend to get distracted easily, not finish tasks or show up to work on time, slack off, play video games, do the bare minimum, screw up their tasks, make their jobs or work environment worse, etc. And this easily sets Benson off consistently throughout regular show. I don't think Mario and Luigi are going to necessarily mirror Mordecai and Rigby's laziness and personalities. It's more so I can see each brother encompass one or more specific traits to get them either fired from or quit Wrecking Crew. We know Mario to be an everyman of sorts, a guy skilled at a lot of things, not necessarily the best. Jack of all trades, master of none. He's good at jumping really high, racing, partying, platforming, baseball, tennis, soccer, golf, dancing, etc. 
I fully expect Mario's slew of skills and numerous spin-offs to play a role in his character, specifically as a guy who's multi-talented and is aware of it. Mario is a jolly, kind, caring, fair, pure-hearted individual, but he has a slight tinge of ego and pride. He's multi-talented at a lot of things, he might face new challenges and certain tasks, with overconfidence and a tinge of nonchalance, he has potential and adequate versatility, but he may lack a full understanding in the weight of both his actions and the responsibilities he'll be tasked to do, whether working for a construction slash wrecking crew, or to venture across distant lands to stop a giant total dragon leading an army with largely his bare hands. I figure Mario to essentially be a jolly, nice and normal guy, with plenty of skill and talent for plenty of tasks and hobbies, but may use that as an excuse to be a little aloof, a little nonchalant, not caring enough when he should, a little full of himself, maybe someone who dreams big, but doesn't have a full grasp on the greater world he's in. Someone who might lack a little foresight, perspective, and responsibility beyond being the older brother for Luigi. That could very well play into why he quits or gets fired from Wrecking Crew to make the theory more apt. Maybe Mario's slacking on the job. Maybe Luigi screws up harder on some task and breaks something he shouldn't have or something. And it plays into all the Mario spinoffs and why Mario can do all these things with solid effort and execution. Luigi, on the other hand, is a character I believe a lot of us don't really have to deduce much harder, even with the limited material that we have in the film. Luigi's consistently portrayed as someone also capable, strong, multi-talented, a great jumper, kind, caring, and precious, but is considerably more timid, cowardly. He gets terrified more easily by enemies, especially ghosts. He's treated every now and then as the player 2 to Mario, someone people look down to compared to him, casted in Mario's shadow, and Luigi himself has portrayed a bit of an inferior complex to his brother to an extent. But he does care and love and value his brother incredibly much as we see in the Mario and Luigi games, the Luigi's Mansion series, Super Mario Galaxy and such. Luigi's personality will likely match that of his personality like in basically every single Mario game since 2001. We see him afraid of the Dry Bones Horde, worried of being separated from Mario while lunged into the warp zone, intimidated by Bowser when in his clutches, etc. We already have a taste of all of this, so it's probably borderline guaranteed Luigi's basically going to be the same as he always was. Luigi's persona is one thing, but I think all of what I theorized and analyzed for Mario will work very well given of the hundreds of Mario games out there, Mario's always acted as a vehicle for the player to experience the gameplay almost every single time, a la the 2D games, the 3D games, the racing party and sports games, if not as a vehicle to delve into other characters and their slash other stories, a la the Mario and Luigi series, the Paper Mario series, etc. Despite how basic and simplistic Mario's personality's always been compared to most other core Mario characters, Mario was always regarded as one of the primary members with quote-unquote no personality, and this would at least provide a significantly more solid, engaging, and thorough baseline for more people that recent Mario games are cracking more and more into ever so slightly, giving Mario that personality slash extra layers of character. That's my assessment as far as the brothers' personalities for the film right before our last trailer, and a month before the film drops. But what about their arcs? What's their whole character journey and depth for the movie beyond that? I believe their character arcs will not only be vocal points to serve and accentuate both brothers' as characters, but to also highlight their bond in the film as well. Sell more that this is a Super Mario Brothers movie. Mario and Luigi will be separated a good chunk of the film. Mario will land in the Mushroom Kingdom towards Peach's domain, whereas Luigi will land in the Dark Lands closer to Bowser's. Luigi gets captured, but we see Mario venture through the Mushroom Kingdom, training with the help of Princess Peach, traveling with her and Toad, fighting Donkey Kong, racing across landscapes and Rainbow Road. The adventure itself will focus more on Mario himself than Luigi. And despite that, I think that can still be a solid way to emphasize the brothers' bond. Mario does have an attraction to Peach in the games all the time, but with this being Mario's first visit to the Mushroom Kingdom, to Peach, his attachment to her is not going to be as close, passionate, or vivid. Definitely not right away. Mario and Luigi, on the other hand, they're family. That's his brother. Mario has more than enough reason just from that alone 
to give him the motivation to set out and take on Bowser if it means saving his younger, more timid brother. That's more effective for an origin story plot than if Mario had to save Peach. To add to that, Mario's discovery of the Mushroom Kingdom and its neighboring landmarks, this whimsical, magical place with all these crazy, nonsensical things that happen and take place, including all the Mario karting that happened in the film later, this will likely spark Mario's fire, his passion and love for adventure to parallel his most recognized adventures and genre of games. Him spending that adventure with Peach will also gradually establish his affection and love for her, getting to know her more, us seeing more of Peach's personality, character, goals, dreams and such, not just Mario's, and that gives us both a connection between them and another layer to Mario's character by way of his romantic feelings for the princess. And lastly, piling everything points to this being a classic hero's journey for Mario, which makes as much sense as consuming protein after a workout. That everyman description, Mario filling a more generic niche and able to do plenty of generic tasks just fine, fits him well between both facts that Mario's voice in the film, with a bit of a Brooklyn, New York accent, portrays him as any normal guy, and the fact this movie is giving us an origin story for Mario discovering the Mushroom Kingdom for the first time. Throughout many promotional material, the first trailer taking in the Mushroom Kingdom for the first time with awe, the second trailer traveling around multiple locations with Peach and Toad, and interacting with his environment as a novice, someone new to all these places and enemies, in amazement of plenty of it as well. Mario's the clear fish out of water in this story, and with the assistance of Toad and Peach, he's understanding the Mushroom Kingdom better throughout. He might have one goal set or certain aspirations and lackadaisical feelings to other things, but this adventure really sets his sights on that adventure aspect more than anything else. He's tasked to platform a lot of the time. Platforming is a natural element to not just Toad Town and the Mushroom Kingdom, but the entirety of Mario's world beyond the Mushroom Kingdom. He's training to platform, jump, dodge obstacles, take power-ups, fight and make his way from one end to another with plenty of physical and acrobatic prowess and flexibility. Mans has an actual training arc in the movie, but it's serving to not only make Mario stronger, more capable, and match more his game counterpart with all of this, but it's also going to test Mario's resolve and will. Can he live up to the task? Can he actually do it? Is this generic white ass guy from Brooklyn really what Peach, the Mushroom Kingdom, and the entire world actually need to take out King Bowser, leader of the Koopa army? Was Mario dreaming too big early on in the movie? Is he prepared to set his sights and goals on something larger than any job he had in Brooklyn, New York? Does he have the heart, persistence, and skill to save both his brother and potentially the world? All of these questions I think will encapsulate Mario's character arc and journey in this movie. And in spite of Luigi being a damsel this time, ignoring this isn't the first time Luigi's either a damsel or an individual caught in some perilous, dangerous situation where Mario has to save him, I doubt the movie will slouch on giving Luigi a limelight either. I fully expect this movie to give Luigi a decent amount of screen time, early on his own thoughts and feelings, his own dreams and mental state but also how he views himself individually, or at the very least, how he views himself compared to Mario. But Luigi in this dire situation, debatably his most dire compared to other Mario games, will also test Luigi's courage and resolve in a different way from the games. He's captured. He's in unknown, uncharted, significantly more volatile and dangerous territory. Mario has the luxury of learning more about the Mushroom Kingdom and the cartoony logic the games follow. Luigi doesn't. So how long can he sit there in Bowser's castle to rely on Mario to save him, or receive some out until he decides he's going to make the out himself? Is he going to sit in Bowser's clutches and get tortured or scared out of his mind, or is he going to bust out, sneak out, escape, maybe even fight to try and reunite with Mario? Will he get his own mini-adventure throughout the film if he does? Will he find out about stuff Mario and Peach don't know about Bowser, his army, his plans, etc.? There's a couple different ways they could go about Luigi's character arc and actual journey in the film, but I fully expect Luigi's character arc to be some sort of test on Luigi's courage, his love for his brother, and his discipline to be more self-reliant than dependent on Mario. This done in some different way from Luigi's Mansion, from Mario and Luigi, etc. Based on the setup and premise for this movie, I think that could make for a rich and fun story to give to Luigi, especially for hardcore Mario fans. And not only do I think these character arcs and journeys can serve both brothers and this movie incredibly well, 
but their core themes are what can make these arcs and journeys, and the movie itself, so rich and beautiful to begin with. Luigi's theme for his arc will serve more as an emphasis on the brothers' relationship more than the other way around, I feel. It's the more cliché part of the thematic writing for the film. Love, family, close bonds, etc. But it's so precious when it's Mario and Luigi. If you played any Mario and Luigi game, any Luigi's Mansion, or even Mario plus Rabbids, you know what I'm talking about. And ignoring that, with everything theorized and analyzed, it could still 100% be a theme of brotherly love and strong chemistry that can be executed very well and be a delight to experience all the same. You not only have a solid, endearing, and existing theme there that emphasizes the brothers themselves, selling that this is a Super Mario Brothers movie, but the genius for me comes with Mario's theme in his character journey, and that theme is consistently persisting through struggles, overcoming obstacles, and eventually succeeding. My very first Mario game was Super Mario Sunshine, and most Mario fans mark that game as the hardest 3D Mario game for plenty of good reason. In spite of its faster, firm controls, its secret levels were pretty difficult, especially for a Mario newcomer, selling how much the game's designed around Flood. A lot of blue coin locations were too cryptic and locked off behind specific episodes. Certain levels like the lily pad level or the pachinko level are not beginner friendly whatsoever, etc. I played an unbelievable amount of sunshine way back in the day, but I was ASS the first time around. Same for when I got to Super Mario 64 DS, Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Luigi Partners in Time, New Super Mario Brothers, etc. Remind yourself of the first couple Mario games you ever played in your life. Let's be honest, all of us were ASS at Mario games. And over the years, in more Mario games that introduced post-game challenges with harder boss fights, harder final levels, hard or so many collectibles to just obtain and such, there are plenty of specific obstacles, collectibles, and challenges that were just tough to do. Now, having played so many Mario games, for almost 20 years I'd say, even new games when I go in blind, I'm much more skilled at Mario than when I was 6. Roughly every blue coin spot in Mario Sunshine, I have memorized in the back of my mind. I can 100% Sunshine with not much struggle. Especially the same for every other 3D Mario game. The first time I got to the darker side in Mario Odyssey, that game's final level, I only died once and beat it the second time. It took me a while to get through New Super Mario Bros. DS and Wii, but New Super Mario Bros. 2 and U, I managed to beat in a faster, much easier fashion. I grinded the hell out of Mario Kart Wii, Double Dash, and DS, and 7 and 8 are much easier to practice by comparison for me. Video games have consistently conveyed that message of consistent practice and knowledge of the game in general can reward you in so many different games and genres, but that reward often comes in multiple ways beyond simply clearing the objective. Mario games are some of the best examples of this. That theme has always been a staple to why Mario is one of the most recognized and respected platformers and video games ever. It's always had that since Mario 1, and every 2D and 3D game has it. Even the spin-offs in multiple ways too. That mastery of control, moveset, level design, and utilization of both are what make Mario games so unbelievably fun to replay and master because most of them not only control very well, but also are designed very well to last generations to come. Overcoming the Hammer Brothers in Mario 1, that feeling of beating Grandmaster Galaxy's perfect run in Galaxy 2, beating every level in the special world in 3D Land and 3D World. I can list so many examples, but you and I both are fully aware that Mario's one of the prime examples of overcoming obstacles and failures to achieve success and victory. It's one of his core design philosophies, basically. And the movie, I fully expect, is going to encapsulate that theme in Mario's journey and character arc very well. He's struggling to platform in Peach's obstacle course. He falls from the donut platforms that turn red from standing on them for too long. He missed times going through the fake fire bar, gets smacked by fake bullet and bonsai bills. Later on, smacked by cheap cheeps. Even before that, just going through Toad Town, he's struggling to both catch up with Toad platforming through the town, mainly jumping from the one yellow platform to the other, as well as understand the town's pipe structure, and is exhausted upon reaching Peach's castle but is relieved to have done so anyways. In some ads, we have more examples of Mario getting better at the platforming, jumping on the fake bullet bills, smashing through a cardboard cutout of Bowser, getting the Tanuki suit. We already have several instances of that theme being both the core theme for Mario and his character arc, but also one of, if not the core themes of the film. And while we have plenty of films that convey that message 
hard work, consistency, and discipline equating to success, achieving your dreams and such, specifically grinding through your struggles and obstacles are a core theme for Mario games already, and paralleling that with the Super Mario Bros. movie, to me, is a genius way to construct a Mario film. Not only do we have so much representing and tying into the games already, between the power-ups, locations, characters, set pieces, music, hundreds of subtle and in-your-face visible references, but the Mario movie likely giving us a hero's journey for Mario that could display the same theme his games both display and ingrain in every person who's played at least one Mario game in their life would make for a rich, fun, and ingenious theme for a video game adaptation. And that's not even counting Mario and Luigi's theme of brotherly love and connections with others. That's practically a bonus to me, and I still think that is something the movie will portray anyways. That's my character and character arc analysis slash theory for Mario and Luigi for the Mario movie. Two days out from our final trailer and a month from the final movie. So you know where I'm gonna be and what I'm gonna do for both. Thank you very much for listening and watching, and I hope you guys are looking forward to this movie as much as I am. We're so close, dude! We're so close! Woo! Stay super! Yo! Hey! Man, man! Hey! What are ya? Whoop! Whoop! Go on! Ha! Ha! Yeah! Ah, man! Hey! Lai! Man! Bye, girl! Man! Go! Yes, yes.